Hey buddies, it's day two of PlayStation 4 being unleashed upon the world. Yesterday we did our epic nine hour stream, we're still recovering, but I have had some time to derp around in my own time with the system, and uh, mainly I've just been playing with some Killzone to try to formulate an opinion outside of the show on what I think of the gameplay, and I've also been playing a little bit with uh, some of the Vita um, crossplay features. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you right now I'm not going to play much with it because I just booted it up there. Um, one thing I can say about it, my first impression is that it is hardly any lag. It is, uh, I went through the menus and just kind of like clicked through the options just by going like this. And you can't see right there, but it, it's in the background. Oh, maybe you can, you can kind of make it out. The image is kind of bright. But you can see that option going up and down. Um, I, I slowed it down, uh, or I took the video, I, I did a similar video to this, and then I compared the frames, and it looks like there's maybe a four second, or, or a four frame delay, which isn't bad at all. Um, it's communicating via, uh, Wi-Fi, um, with the, and apparently you can do it through the internet. Uh, I haven't tested that feature yet, but I can tell, the, the reason I won't use this much is because I can't stand playing a first-person shooter like this. I could see maybe playing some other games that were more designed for a controller like this. They overcame the limitations of the Vita's control schematic by making it so that you, um, the swipes that you do on the middle pad on the DualShock 4 can be done on the screen. The back um, here is also a touch uh, uh, surface so you can press um, various areas on it to um, simulate the L1 and R1 buttons along with the uh, right stick and left stick presses. Uh, the thing is, even with that four frame delay, that's my, I feel like it's perceptively more when you start to play a game that requires a lot of precision, especially when aiming down the scope uh, uh, to try to line up an enemy, which on a, even on a good day, I hate doing. I hate playing first person shooters with analog sticks when it requires precision. That's me. Um, but, uh, I could see it actually being much more forgiving and enjoyable if there were some lock-ons, some sticky iron sights on this that allowed you to just kind of, just gently guided you towards the enemy when you got close. Um, I usually actually hate that sometimes, depends on the game. Uh, but um, I am very impressed by the quality that comes across onto this, uh, that it streams to the Vita. Uh, it, uh, when going over 802.11n, it, um, feels like it's almost 60 frames per second, if not a little less, when going over B, or G rather, uh, I tried both, um, it seems to be only about 30 frames per second, and your mileage will vary, uh, may vary, um, depending on your, your home setup, your router. I'm using Airport Extremes, um, an Apple setup, and it seems to work pretty well though. It was seamless, um, it connected, it found the PlayStation 4 really quickly, uh, I guess the next step is trying out some of the second screen features on games that you can use with the, the Vita, uh, but I haven't tried that out yet. Uh, one thing I did try with Killzone specifically was I tried to post some um, videos of gameplay that I was playing, and I discovered that after 15 minutes of recording, um, it, it doesn't record the last 15 minutes. It records 15 minutes from when you started playing, and once it hits the 15 minute mark, it stops recording. So when I went to grab the last 15 minutes of my gameplay, I discovered that it had only recorded the first 15 minutes of the game I was playing that day. Um, once you press the share button, go in there and decide not to use the clip, it will then begin a new recording. Um, so, so I guess if you want to work around this limitation right now, it seems to be a bug. Uh, you could just click share every 15 minutes to make sure that your latest gameplay is being saved. Um, it's a shame because I really wanted to to try out a post and see what the post quality was like. I guess I could still do that actually, but my gameplay was really crappy because I couldn't select from what I just played, which I actually had liked of the gameplay. Um, but I wanted to see how it uh, the quality that it goes up to Facebook with. Uh, still doesn't have straight to YouTube functionality. Hope that they get that out in the future because that'd be really neat. Um, speaking of gameplay, I was playing more Killzone. Um, I am not in love with it, that's for sure. That's a far cry from what is true. In fact, I've been annoyed with it at times. It's, uh... It has waypoints, but you need to manually bring those waypoints up, and they're very hard to see on the screen. Um, regardless, it doesn't seem to really matter, because much of the time I found myself 
kind of confused as to... I wasn't confused as to what the objective was, but sometimes not really understanding what the point was or the exact um, uh, way to go about achieving the objectives. I think it's because I'm, I'm a new player to the game, and I'm used to... And I think this does a service to games, is when you start off with a companion who kind of um, brings you through a scenario and kind of describes this, the, this, I guess, strategy that you're going to attempt a mission with. This happens a lot in Call of Duty with, like, you know, you're accompanied by soap or something like that, and he's telling you things. Or, are you soap? And you're, you got Price with you, and he's telling you what to do. Um, I think a really good example of it, actually, was in Metro, the recent Metro game. Uh, in which you have, at first you have the girl with you, uh, the sniper girl, who's kind of describing what's going on on the battlefield and uh, what your next, next objective should be. Um, and then uh, and then you have that other guy, that Russian guy, uh, that you, you end up going through the catacombs with for a while. And I think that when you have these temporary companions near the beginning of a game, it does a real service to the player um, just to get a scope around how things work in the world. Because unlike the character that you're playing as, who has had, you know, many, many years of military training, and he's an expert, you are playing as him, and yet you are not an expert yet. So there's a disconnect between you and the person you're playing as. And speaking of that, that just piles on to the fact that I didn't even have a connection with him to begin with. Um, you start the game as the guy playing as a, as a young boy, and I thought that that was actually a nice twist on the beginning, um, and yet we, well, we just kind of shat on it, and that's our fault, but uh, just making fun of the kid. Um, however, despite that, I did play it again on my own, and I tried to look at it objectively, and I didn't see myself feeling very connected at all to the father or the kid. I think it's because it, it may be different. If you've played previous kill zones, I could see maybe... Uh, knowing a little bit more about the history and the story, but it, as is, this is the first kill zone I've really jumped into, and that brief little explanation of what's going down at the beginning, while intriguing, and I am interested in the lore behind kill zone uh, to some extent, um, I didn't find it completely engaging at that point. Uh, I think that the game seems to take a lot of presumptions that you have played the kill zone series, and I base that assumption on the fact that. In addition to what I just, the point I just made, I think that it has, it also throws you into the deep end in terms of tutorials. It doesn't really explain exactly how everything works. Um, just the simple little heads up that, you know, that you come to expect from games to give you the, the show you the ropes. Uh, hopefully, while you're still playing the game, so you don't get bored by being shown the ropes. Um, uh, speaking of boredom, there were there are puzzles, platforming puzzles in the game. In particular, the first one that I've encountered is uh, in a reactor within a defunct spaceship. I didn't find that at all entertaining. I found it to be, uh, to begin with, I don't like the way the guy jumps. I don't like the way that he climbs onto platforms. I find it clunky and odd. It doesn't feel fluent, especially compared to like a, for someone who's very used to like a game like Portal. Um, it feels like the polar opposite of Portal in terms of its uh, s gameplay and smoothness, and it makes parts in which you have to platform and puzzle solve to be tedious and just let me get to the action or the stealth action again. And as far as stealth action goes, the balance between stealth and action, I still haven't figured out yet what the game really wants you to achieve. Stealth seems to be extremely difficult because you have no perception of how far away the enemy can see you from, and there is no indicator, and I'll compare this again to Metro, in which you have a little light that verifies that you are hidden from their sight or not. I know that may not be the most realistic thing in the world, but um, it is helpful because when you're in a first-person environment with no peripheral and no gauge of where your body is hanging out outside of corners, um, it's really difficult to tell when you can be seen or not. Uh, and I think that there's a real problem with that in this game. I found myself enjoying it a lot more if I just played it like an action game, go balls to the wall, and use my robot a lot to create cover, um, and go ahead on point and create cover for me, cover fire with me. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna keep on playing it. Uh, it's beautiful, and I think that's what's keeping me interested. It is gorgeous. It rivals, um, Crisis, to be sure. Crisis still has an edge on it, though. 
uh, not only in graphics, but in gameplay, in my opinion. Crisis is way better at gameplay, but I still am interested because of the first console that's come near this kind of graphical prowess, and uh, um, it is gorgeous. All right, that kind of wraps that up. I guess uh, I'll let you know that tomorrow is my birthday, and there's going to be a Rayman Legends 4-play, 5-play Friday on Sunday, my birthday. Tune in to see that, and on Tuesday is Adventure Time. Uh, explore the dungeon because I don't know, um, and we'll be in full costume for that, and it's going to be a fun time as well. Uh, no show on Monday. Uh, until then, <laughs> we're gearing up for Xbox One week. We'll see you. Uh, th that's coming up too, so get ready for that. And uh, you might see some on and off coverage of the next generation consoles as I derp around with it some more. Um, I'll see you later, guys. I love you.